Hello from South Dakota. We're in Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Craig Gentry. My wife Aspen and I have our brand new runaway camper hitched up and we're ready to take it on its very first trip. South Dakota, here we come. We chose South Dakota because last August, Aspen and I were married in Grand Teton National Park. We honeymooned in Glacier and on our way home, we happened to be nearing the Black Hills around bedtime. Our route took us through Sturgis, but there was no vacancy. Yep, bike rally. What are the odds? We booked the only room available in the area, a Holiday Inn Express in Deadwood. It was pure coincidence we ended up in the Black Hills for the night. The next morning, we decided to go look at Mount Rushmore because how can you come to the Black Hills and not see Mount Rushmore? On the 45 minute drive, I fell in love with the towering ponderosa pines clinging onto the granite protruding through the soil. I told Aspen we were going to have to come back when we had more time to explore. I figured it'd take us a few years to return, but here we are, less than one year later. Usually on our long trips, we'll drive until about 9 or 10 at night and get a hotel room or a campground somewhere. Uh, but since this is the first time towing our camper, we're going to try to not drive it at nighttime. So we're going to try to find a spot around, probably around Omaha, and get a campsite there or a hotel, just depending on what we can get. This is Aspen's first time driving the camper. How you feel, Aspen? I feel pretty good. There you go. She feels pretty good. On our first day, we made really good time and hit Omaha around 4.30, so we pressed on and stopped in North Sioux City, just over the state line in South Dakota. Our first night spent in the runaway was in a KOA surrounded by giants. The following day was spent watching the wall drug signs count down our mileage for us. Of course we had to stop in for their famous donuts. Runaway Camper sets up easier than any other camping setup I've ever had. We're staying at Custer Crazy Horse Campground until we leave next week. Located in the town of Custer, it's perfectly located to day trip from here to all of our activities we want to do. Every trip to a national park starts off the same way, by stamping our passports. Wind Cave was no exception. natural entrance was discovered because of the amount of wind that was blowing out of it, hence the name. The boxwork filled cave wasn't very camera friendly, but if you watched our New Mexico video, you know we love a good cave. This cave contains 99% of the world's boxwork formation, so that makes it very unique and a must-see.
Crazy Horse Memorial was one of the pleasant surprises of this trip. The Indian Museum of North America is home to a large collection of art and artifacts reflecting the diverse histories and cultures of the American Indian people. If you're in the area, it's worth a stop just for the museum alone. As I said earlier, no trip to the Black Hills is complete without seeing Mount Rushmore. Since we visited last year, we didn't want to go back to the monument. We wanted to see it a little differently this time. Iron Mountain Road has several great spots to get a different perspective of our former presidents. The Norbeck Overlook is a great place to get eye level. My favorite photo spot was looking through the Dwayne Robinson Tunnel. Our camp, if you want to call it that, really just serves as a home base to day trip from. We're not the type of campers to sprawl out and relax with a campfire and cook a bunch of meals. We stay on the move and soak up as much of an area as we can in the short amount of time that we're there. All we really need from our camp is a warm shower and a comfy bed. Wi-Fi is a plus. I might look crowded, but none of our other camping setups has allowed so much comfort while editing our daily photos. I am already in love with this little camper. Spearfish Canyon is on the western side of the Black Hills. It has a gorgeous drive through the canyon, swimming holes, and several accessible waterfalls with short hikes. We started with Spearfish Falls. There's an overlook deck at the top, but there's also a short hike down to the base. We highly recommend doing that. Rough Luck Falls was a little bit longer of a hike, but there's a parking area right by the falls with a paved path that takes you right where you want to go. We did not know that.
At the front gate of every national park, they give you a uniform to put on, which usually includes Chacos, a color-coordinated sh uh, short and top outfit, as well as a camera strap, and a fanny pack if you're above the age of 30. Devil's Tower is just over the border in Wyoming, but totally worth the trip. The jury is still out on how Devil's Tower was formed, we may never know, but it's definitely something that you have to visit if you're in the Black Hills. The short paved loop weaved itself through boulders on the ground and pine trees in the sky. Breakfast is usually something quick at camp. Always coffee for me, sometimes Apple Jacks for Aspen. We fueled up because we were headed to Badlands National Park. We were treated to some nice overviews early on. I can't recall ever seeing terrain like what is found in the Badlands. There's great contrast between the rocky gullies and the grassy plains. We catch our first bit of wildlife early. Both were keeping to themselves and we kept safe distance to let them graze. We head to the visitor center to add another stamp to our passports and get our souvenirs like cheesy tourists do. Now it's time to lace them up and see some sights on foot. We started on the notch trail but didn't get too far due to a log jam on the ladder. We checked out the windows and the doors trails. They're very short and mostly along boardwalks, but great views are to be had on both. The wildlife in the Badlands was certainly more than I expected. A visit to the prairie dog town is a must and we saw several bison hanging out nearby. Bighorn sheep was one of the best wildlife experiences of my life.
we pulled over to take some photos and all was going well until this big boy made eye contact. I'm kind of nervous. He's walking right to me. Right here. As he approached, we stopped feeling like we were keeping our safe distance, so I jumped into the truck and shot from the window. Soon, all of his buddies would join in, and we watched the bighorn sheep parade. Yeah, he's running. No. He's right here behind the... Little did we know, the show was just getting started. This photographer was out on a ridgeline trail shooting the bighorn sheep below him when the last sheep closed him off. He got tense for a moment. Everyone was feeling the tension of the possibility of an incident. He was trapped with not many options, and for a lot longer than I show on camera. Uh oh. I'm gonna charge you now. Aspen, are you watching this? Yeah. Oh. Thank goodness. In unison, the crowd breathed a sigh of relief when the sheep laid down. But the show wasn't over yet. The photographer ended up going down the backside and coming up a different ridge line, far from the animals. Everyone soon relaxed and calmed down and we were on our way. Yes, at Custer State Park, they do allow you to feed and pet these uh, burrows. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing something illegal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about feeding them so much because they want to climb in your car with you, but definitely pet them. found a little herd of bison, they're right off the road here, so we're gonna pull over and uh, get a couple shots of them real quick. Sylvan, Sylvan Lake? Sylvan Lake. Sylvan Lake. Let's go up there and check that out. I think that's gonna be the best part of the town, or of the town, of the park. Um, Give me your thoughts and opinions on these uh, on our Custer Custer State Park picnics that we just dined on. 
So our picnic was a little mediocre. Are you talking about the food? Yeah. Yeah. Our picnic was a little mediocre. We loaded up at Walmart before we came to South Dakota. Yeah, so in an effort to save some money, uh, <laughs> to keep us from having to leave the state park and go like four miles down the street to the town of Custer and spend $35 on a delicious meal, <laughs> we decided to go to Walmart at home and buy $140 worth of groceries so we can have a $35 mediocre turkey sandwich. So, so you win some, you lose some, I guess. It wasn't that great. No. And the pickles tasted weird. <laughs> And Walmart's cheddar cheese cubes are trash. Oh, the steps are this tall. I don't have to show you all these shots. Black Elk Peak, the tallest peak between the Rockies and the Pyrenees. I'd describe the hike as slightly strenuous if those two adjectives are allowed to coexist. We're in the final stretch now. This is a this is a pretty tough little hike. I love a tough hike if the payoff is worth it. On this hike, <laughs> it's worth it. Atop the summit sits a decommissioned stone fire tower built by the Civilian Conservation Corps in 1938. all this way. A little bit like this. This is really awkward. Yeah. Three hundred and sixty degree views allow hikers to see South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, and Nebraska. In my opinion, it's the most beautiful place in the park to watch the sun sink closer to the horizon. Thank you. 
in absolutely no hurry to leave, we begrudgingly pack up the runaway camper that has provided us so much comfort to head back to the bog that is the uncomfortable Kentucky weather. Runaway Camper has been as enjoyable as the Black Hills themselves. Where should we take it next? I do love Colorado in the fall. <laughs> 